and welcome back to Tokyo Tuesdays, the segment in which I head to the Tokyo Disney theme parks to sample and review every last eatery. For our 53rd episode, we're finally making our first stop in Critter Country, hitting up Rackety's Raccoon Saloon. Starting in Tokyo Disneyland, to get to Rackety's Raccoon Saloon, start by heading straight into the World Bazaar. Continue straight all the way through until you pop out the other side. Once you're under the open sky again, veer to your left and make your way down the road, which circles back towards the palace. Follow the road around until you come to a large wooden bridge into Western Land. Turn left to cross the bridge, and then take the first right you're able to, passing between Snow White's Wishing Well on your left and the castle on your right. You're now in Fantasyland. Continue straight, veering to your left when you can, making your way generally towards the back of the park. Pass by the castle carousel on your right, followed by the Dumbo Flying Elephant Ride. Keeping a sharp eye out, this path tends to get a little looked over, make your way towards Critter Country. The Haunted Mansion will be on your right, and the Western River Railroad tracks will be on your left. Stroll along the Critter Country pathway, passing by Grandma Sarah's Kitchen on your right, and the splashdown spot for Splash Mountain, before taking the right fork of the path. This is the fork that heads down underground, and is closest to the water. Keep on following the path forward, and there, on the other side, back out under the open sky, you'll be rewarded with Rackety's Raccoon Saloon. Rackety's Raccoon Saloon is a counter-service eatery featuring tortilla dogs, churros, and more. Nestled in what feels like the absolute backest back corner of the park, the Raccoon Saloon has a vague, whimsical feel to it like how you'd expect an anthropomorphic raccoon's western saloon to feel. Built into the side of the hill, there are some very delightful rock features, as well as, appropriately enough, hand-washing stations. There is limited outdoor seating available, but because it's fairly off the beaten path, you can usually find a seat here. All right, I'm still in Halloween costume because in Japan, it's not yet Halloween and I'm still celebrating, so Yay for us, we get this look for a while longer. Uh, so yeah, I'm back in the park again. Uh, today I am at uh, Rickety Raccoon Saloon, and I am with my friend April once again. Hello. She's over here, she's dressed like Sally. You can't see her, but it's very nice. Uh, we got the seasonal sundae, which has, I believe, pumpkin, pumpkin flavored soft serve there in the back, one of the Mickey churros, and this adorable little ghost. Um, you've never tried pumpkin before. No. Have you, 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 you already started because you didn't have to set up a camera. How is it? It's very different. It's different. Different in a good way or different in a bad way? It doesn't taste like the vegetable at all. Yeah. <laughs> so that's her, her take on it. I'm a, I'm a start because I'm hungry. Oh, I also got the uh, cheese tortilla hot dog. I don't think it's a hot dog, I think it's a sausage. Uh, and, and I'm a little nervous about the quality of cooked on it, but we'll try it, we'll see how it is. You just tried your first churro, how was it? I can't quite figure out the taste. <laughs> it's like a very, very crunchy donut. But with lots of cinnamon. The, the board said that it was cinnamon flavored, so. Oh, that's why. <laughs> so I'm also not a big fan of this wind. I'm also not a big fan of pumpkin flavored things, so we'll find out. That girl just got scared by a leaf. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I get scared by leaves all the time. Yeah, actually, I, I kind of like the pumpkin flavored soft serve. Not a big fan of pumpkin flavored things, but... It, it doesn't really, like I said, it doesn't taste like a vegetable. It tastes just like sweet. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's not it's, it's not vanilla. The purple is probably grape flavored, if I had to guess. I'm gonna say you're right. Mm. <laughs> um, is it chocolate at the bottom? I'm not quite sure what this is. Yeah, it looks like chocolate flakes. Corn flakes, obviously, because it's a Sunday. This is our breakfast, by the way. It's biscuit. A chocolate biscuit. Huh. For Americans, what does that mean? Uh, cookie. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
What did you think of the uh, chocolate ghost? Wasn't that great? Yeah, I didn't like it either. It wasn't very good. I was it did look cute. It looked super cute. Yes, but it, but it tasted off. It was a very, I think, bitter chocolate. Mm. It was dark. And it had, it, I felt like it had something in it. Like, like, yeah. I'm not... I'd, I'd have to eat another one, but yeah. I ate it so quickly because I was just expecting yeah. it to be chocolate, and I was like, oh, that was... That was not what I was expecting. That was not quite what I was expecting, no. All right, let's try the cheese tortilla dog before it gets cold. That's not bad, actually. It tastes fine. I'm actually surprised. I wasn't really expecting to like this once I saw it. I was like, oh, that looks kind of undercooked, and there's no color in it, and the cheese doesn't look very good, but it tastes fine. We're going to finish our amazingly healthy breakfast in peace, <laughs> and then we'll be on to the next place. I know we have fast passes for Space Mountain, so that'll be fun, uh, and I'm going to try and drag her into some photo ops, which is good times for me. My first photo op. <laughs> And I will see you at whatever the next place is. It's going to be November, well into November by the time you see these. So yay, belated Halloween! <laughs> and wind! <laughs>notice that I was still in my Halloween costume for that. That is probably a look you should get used to. I had the opportunity to spend my entire Halloween vacation in the park and I absolutely took advantage of that to record quite a few episodes for this show. So you should probably just consider me the nightmare until Christmas. On to the review. Service is a two or a three out of five. When I visited this location, they had a trainee working the counter, and while she and the other two employees working there were all smiley and happy and as friendly as you could hope for, she was very flustered. That's okay, that's fine, new jobs are stressful, goodness knows, and for all I know, it was her first shift ever. I have no problem with flustered, she did however mess up my order. It's a very subtle thing, but she got me a large soda when I asked for a small. Now, in America, this would have been handled to my favor with me getting the large soda, but only having to pay for the small. However, that's not how things went down here. Uh, when they realized that I had asked for a small, but uh, been charged for a large, they made me aware of the error. They said, you know, was this what you ordered? And I said, no, I ordered a small. And they said, we can get you a small. We can refund you the, the difference if you'd like. And at this point, the large soda had already been poured. So I just said it was fine and took the large. She did mess up the order, but I was made aware of the mess up and they did offer to fix it. So I can't really ding them for that. That was my choice to take the large soda at that point. Uh, service was very fast. So there is also that. So yeah, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5, just because they made me aware of their mistake and they did their best to fix it, and their attitudes were really great. Atmosphere is a 4 out of 5. Because this location is so far in the back of the park, it's actually a really peaceful location, discounting the train that chugs through with some regularity. Uh, additionally, it feels really genuinely like a cartoon without straying into sort of the Toontown territory. It has this sort of realism meets cartoon with the ways that like the wood is chopped off at the end of the logs or the shape of the windows, which is very stylized with again, not delving too far into Toontown territory. It's really interesting. It feels like it came out of one of the talking animal cartoons which is great and exactly what you want from this sort of location. It is off the beaten path, so it's not usually very crowded here, which is nice. It's a great location, four out of five. Price is a three out of five. The seasonal ice cream sundae was actually kind of a bargain. Ice cream by itself or a churro would each cost 300 plus yen. However, Together, getting both in one dish 
it's only 500 yen. Which, as I said, is kind of a bargain. Nice. The hot dog, meanwhile, is not quite as much of a bargain, coming in at 390 yen. Uh, but it is relatively filling, and it tastes good. So, all in all, that sort of averages out to a very average rating of 3 out of 5. The food is a 3 out of 5. There was something off about the ice cream, and I'm hard-pressed to say what it was. Uh, for pumpkin ice cream, though, it definitely didn't taste like pumpkin. Similarly, there was something weird about the chocolate, and again, very hard pressed to say what it was other than it didn't taste how I expected chocolate to taste. The hot dog, meanwhile, was surprisingly lacking in color. Uh, I would have been fine with that had they made it part of the branding and maybe called it like a ghost dog so that when it came out dressed in its white tortilla with its white cheese and its surprisingly pale hot dog, I would have been expecting it, but as, wa as it was, uh, I was not. Uh, despite how shockingly pale it was, it still tasted fine. Uh, it was fully cooked, like no worries there, I'm just used to more color in my food. Uh, it's also worth noting that the hot dog is not quite what an American would think of when they think of a hot dog. It's closer to a sausage, while also not technically being a sausage. It is somewhere between the two. And while still tasty, it's perhaps worth noting for picky eaters. Three out of five. Overall, this gives Rackety's Raccoon Saloon an average rating of 3.25 out of five, which, yeah, that seems pretty good. With a 3.25 out of five, this ties Rackety's Raccoon Saloon with, I think, seven other eateries. I'm going to go ahead and slot it in just above Squeezers, but below the Great American Waffle Company on the master list, which will earn it 16th place. Meanwhile, on the counter service lineup list, uh, it's going to face a similar series of ties and this time come out in 12th place. So that's it for this week. Come back next week if you want to find out where I'll be then. Hint. It's always nice when something sweet pops up. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave those down below. We'd love to hear from you. Give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do. We'd surely appreciate it. If social media is more your flavor, you can find us there. Links to that in the description box. And I will see you next week for another Tokyo Tuesday.